Okay, at 6.34, I'll call the uh, April 7th meeting of the Planning Commission to get uh, to order. Lisa, do you want to do the roll? Yes. Elaine Barton? Here. John Mungie? Here. Patrick Blees is an excused absence. Eric Brenna? Here. Rick Gelbman? Here. Andrew Weiss? Here. We have Lisa Wong? Here. Uh, and from staff, we have Brandy Howe and myself, Lisa Ritchie. Okay, we have a quorum then. Uh, first item of business is to adopt the agenda. Anybody have anything they want to add or change? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Move to adopt the agenda. I'll second. Motion by Rick, second by John. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we've got an agenda. Then approval of the March 3rd, 2022 meeting minutes. Anybody have any changes or corrections? Just one, one item, um, very minimal, but um, on page uh, four of 70 um, in the PDF packet, um, towards the bottom, it says, Ms. House summarized the Planning Commission's priorities as off-street parking, zoning maps, short-term parking. I think that is supposed to be short-term rentals, not short-term parking. I believe and that was it. That's the only thing I saw. Yeah. The paragraph right above old business. Right above old business. Oh. Oh, sorry. Yep. I just have a quick one too. I don't on page eight of 70 uh, top paragraph. I don't recall. Um, discussing various political signs, but if nobody else wants to claim it, I don't know if that was a transcription error or what, but. Yeah, I don't recall who mentioned. Nothing that. wrong with it, but I just, yeah. unless it wants to be attributed to somebody else. I don't recall. Page eight. Well, I guess you get attribution. That's fine Perhaps with me. Perhaps you forgot. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Anything else? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the March 3rd meeting minutes. A motion by John. Second. Second by Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> I'm looking right at you. I don't recognize you. <laughs> Beard and glasses. All righty, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, those are approved. Then we have meeting open to the public. We have nobody here in the audience, but do we have anybody on Zoom, Lisa? We do not. Okay, then we'll move right down to commission business action items and item A, the sign ordinance update. So I guess Brandy will zip right through this. Yeah, let's make it zippy. Um, <laughs> shall we do it like, we, oops, like we've been doing it for the past, um, couple of times and just have it open and then kind of go through page by page. Yeah, I think that's a good way to do it. Okay. Is your mic on? I'm just going to verify. It's on. I'll use it this time. Thank you. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm sharing. Is that right? Okay, this is me. No, it's not me. Is that yep. Is it me? We've got it. It's not moving. Oh, okay. Yep, that's me, actually. So oh, okay. Put your screen. Did you see it right? I don't know. Cannot share while the okay. other. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. 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 Well, do you want to operate it? Okay. Because it still isn't showing up there what you're showing on your screen. Well, we're seeing the draft on the screen. Oh, 
almost there. Okay, from the top. Introductory provisions. So we added number six, which is to um, minimize hazards caused by signs that are structurally unsound or interfere with sight lines or unduly distract drivers, pedestrians, or bicyclists. And then to the applicability, any sign visible from a public street as opposed to exterior signage. Please feel free to stop me if you have any questions or additions. Okay. Um, feather sign was changed. Oh, actually, no, it was just the we switched. Um, I don't know if you were here last time, but the temporary was changed once to another word, which I'm not recalling right now, and then it was changed again to non-permanent. Um, so that's what all of these are going to, to be. And then we added the inflatable sign, which was supposed to address the you know, the moving man type of signs. So they're called air activated, they're prohibited, and it would be a non-permanent <clears throat> non sign, typically made of plastic cloth, canvas, or other light fabric, inflated with air, and held upright typically by mechanical means. And then we list that later on in the prohibited sign section. Again, the non-permanent. Could I ask a question on this page? Yes. The freestanding sign, could that be a permanent or non-permanent? Yeah, I believe so. So I think we should add or non-permanent. Or maybe just strike the word permanent? Yeah, if you want to do that. Okay. Either, either way, a sign made of, yeah, I can, um, yeah, I'll just strike that, the word permanent. Um, Off-premise and was revised to reflect the inverse of on-premise sign. We struck pylon sign. I believe this was because it's already covered under the freestanding sign category. Uh, we talked last time about amending the definition of sign. Um, and so now it reads a device structure or fixture which communicates a message using words, graphics, letters, figure symbols, trademarks, or other visual representations. Painted wall designs or patterns are not considered signs. Okay, and the window sign, we had a lot of discussion on this one. Um, so we struck the last sentence um, to simplify it. And I think we'll probably have some more discussion on window signs later on in this meeting. Any questions about the Questions or changes, discussion about the inter or sorry, the definitions. None? We are gonna fly through this. <laughs> All right. Well, any questions about sign permits? <laughs> well, I did have a question on, on sign permits. Sure. These are for permanent signs. Yes. So maybe we could when it under Well, no, no, let me remember here. Um I don't recall us talking about needing a permit for a non-permanent sign. Correct. These are for permanent signs. So maybe we should make that clear under applicability, because it just says the following sign types, and that includes types that are can be non-permanent as well. Yes, that's a very good correction. Okay. All right, let's see here. Okay, so we, we had ta talked about the application, um, clarifying that a signed permit application should be accompanied by the fee according to the adopted fee schedule. We added some stuff about the appeals. Um, we went back and forth on this a little bit last month, and we landed on uh, 30 days. <clears throat> Okay, and that 30-day review, that was acceptable to staff? Yep, and then 45 days um, for yeah, the application. Yeah, on the, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. General sign regulations, applicability, um, all permanent and non-permanent signs. Right. 
placement, no sign should be pasted or attached to city property or equipment without permission from the governing body um, and shall be subject to all lo related laws and ordinances that was added for our discussion. On that page? Yep. Item E3 and F5 cover the same thing as far as the signs and supporting structures maintaining clearance and non-interference. Correct, it would be. I mean, I think we only need to say it once. I think it belongs under placement. I think that's a more logical place as well. Yeah, so I don't, I don't. So strike F5. Yeah. Under 157.04. Okay. Okay, so lighting, we removed the general lighting standards um, and then reinforced that the source of light must be directed at the sign and must be shielded and not visible to pedestrians, motorists, or neighboring residents or businesses. Uh-oh, you lost your, your placard. You lost your name. Sorry, I'll follow down there. Okay. Thank you, though. Is there one in the room? Mm -mm. Oh. That's fine. I'm just, yeah. Can I say that on the record? Yeah. <laughs> Try your phone. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. Anyway. Um, any questions about lighting? None? No, I think those are good changes. Okay. Maintenance? Mostly striking um, language there, I think, to clarify. Yeah. Yeah. I think item three, the new item three, mm -hmm. toward the end of the first line, it says the safety or a building or premises. I think you mean of? Does that mean of a building? H3. Uh, item three, yeah, H3. A sign which becomes structurally unsafe or endangers the safety. I think it of means a building, of a building it. or yep. premises rather than or. Okay. And then moving along to the table. Um, sign area and location regulations. So we simplified this so that we now have two tables, um, sign types with land uses, and then the sign types with the applicable square footage right. based on those land uses and district. And I just had a question on this and I'm not in, oh, oh, yep, it's the, Awareness. Aware, weather awareness, yes. <laughs> oh. I thought I was causing <laughs> that hit? with my mic. Yeah, what did I hit? I hit the mute all. <laughs> um, I, uh, let me use an example. For a single family, freestanding sign is not allowed. As but it is allowed as a non-permanent sign. And I was trying to figure out how to get at the fact that this makes it appear, and maybe it's because it's all on one page, or you know, the rest of it isn't, because when I turned the page, I saw, oh, that's where non-permanent, it shows allowed there. You know, so, and free, a freestanding non-permanent signs would be allowed. I. I think what you're... I'm not following 100%. So okay. When I look at single family and two family... Um, where you say that permanent signs are allowed... No, I'm talking about... This says none of those listed on this page are allowed. Correct. And a freestanding sign is allowed, but it's allowed as a, a non-permanent. Non mm-hmm. And that's what initially was confusing to me, but I think maybe that's because that non-permanent carried over to the next page. So it Oh, I see what you mean. You know, uh, it's not on the same figure here, so it got a little confusing to me. Correct. 
I think that will be rectified when it's codified. Well, and I think making it, you know, whenever it's necessary to differentiate, this is permanent signs. Mm -hmm. They require a permit. So add maybe another heading? Well, I, I thought of that and I thought, oh gosh. You know, like an asterisk. I just don't want to make it so confusing. You know, but I think maybe that can get clarified when we get into later on when we get into the non-permanent signs because they, there might be a way to clarify it. It's just that this was the first time, you know, that I came across it and then I just kept going, thought, oh, okay, maybe we can. Well, that's true. Yeah. Well, and ultimately this won't be on a Word document. It'll be on the exactly. yeah. um, Unicode. Yeah. But I don't want to make the chart any more confusing you know, confusing, and I think it's so simple now that I like it. Okay. Do we want to talk about the size of signs now, or should we do that later? Well, isn't that the next, that section right now that's coming up? It is, but I just kind of foresee that being more of a discussion point. Oh, okay. We can do whatever is your preference. Which probably do it now, right? Eat our vegetables, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure if these are the right numbers or, or not. They primarily were derived from your existing ordinance. Um, the dimensions listed below represent the maximum aggregate sign square footage of all permanent sign faces. So, this, so if you have a dual face sign, you have to multiply that by two to get you know, so each side counts towards your 32 square feet. I know we talked about this, the 32. Mm -hmm. I remember us talking about that, and I don't think the multifamily at 60 was really an issue for anyone. Yep, and these are going to be your freestanding, pylon, marquee, right. building signs. And that's the face. Yep. Yeah. The one that I think is all, the one we spent the most time on was the MU for the non-residential. Mm -hmm. Because that used to be by size of the building face, I think. Correct. I recall. Yep. It couldn't be more than 10% or something. Uh, let me so look. I, yeah. I'm just trying to vision, you know, envision what, if we use the Sentinel, as an example, I have no idea what signage they're thinking of, but they're in the MU1, so they'd have 250 square feet. Sound right to you, builders? <laughs> I don't do I don't do square footage things. <laughs> That's total. So, right? Yeah. So that means. That Mel's Diner is going to have one, and the set is going to have someone else. They are all together. They got to be. It's a multi-use, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's like the Quick Trip. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. that has multiple signs, and they can all they could all add up to a certain option, amount. Do you remember what the previous maximum was? I'm just pulling that up now. Oh great! Oh, so for excellent. The, yes, it is based on square footage. So. Which district are you asking about? But it still had a maximum sign face. It does, but also based on maximum total aggregate of all signs on the site. Right. And those are based on building size. So like for the MUs. Yep, so your MU1 right. can range from 150 up to 250 square feet. Okay, and so now we're at 300. Oh, no, we're at 250, so we kept it the same. Yep. Okay. And then MU2 was 200 to 250. Okay. MU3 was 200 to 400. Okay, so MU3, we dropped that to 100 square feet. And the 400 square feet would apply only to buildings that are over 200,000 square feet. So what might that be? Would that be a target? The building. Ooh, yeah. I don't think so. 
I don't know. Something bigger than it, maybe a Costco? I'm not sure. That is a pretty good sized building. It's like a warehouse, <clears throat> it's like a warehouse size, I think that would be. Yeah. We don't have too many of those size building sites. So if we opened it up to 400, that would be? But then that would be no matter the, that would be any. Yep. So that and could that be a policy change. that is where it could get tricky. It could be, you know, a 2,000 square foot building. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm okay leaving it at 300, and then if, it, if we determine maybe that's not going to work, we could always consider amending it. Yeah, I think it's fine at 300. We're... Okay. It's, um, it's still a lot of signs. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Instead of the 200, yeah. Okay. And you're not dramatically changing your policy, so no. it's not going to make the new signs that pop up substantially different than what's out right. there today. Okay. Well, and we have to remember too, it's the sign face. There's more to a sign than the than the face, just the face. You know, you've got the structure which isn't included. Not in the measurement. Right. That's what I mean. So it can still be a pretty good size structure. Yeah. Okay. Well, what I, I seem to remember that we used to have something about um, uh, is it minimum size or maximum size for a small building. That's in here. Pardon? That's in here. I believe it is in the section that relates to. How to measure? Where was that? Oh, the how? Oh, did we not? I think that was up above. Maybe we passed it. Was it? Wait, no. What was the question? I'm sorry. Um, if we've got a small building and it's an MU three, you don't want them covering their entire. So we're giving the maximum in the chart. Yeah. We're not. There's also a, we're not giving not really a minimum. minimum. It's, it's, um, it's kind of I think that's why on, we use. That's why I think we used to use the percent up to. But the percent could also be limiting, more limiting than maybe you want it to be. So, but I know what you're saying. I think if it was it was the wall signs, right? Correct. Yeah. It'd be page, page 19. It was a minimum of 10 square feet up to a maximum of 15% of the building face. Is that what you're talking about, Rick? Yeah, the, when it gets into the actual, maybe that's why. But now might be a good time to go into that because that does have for wall and window. Oh, you're going into the wall sign specific regulation. Yes. Same principle applies for you know, a, a permanent sign as well. You know, the, um, well, a wall sign presumably would be a permanent. It's sign. a permanent sign, right? You mean like a freestanding, like yeah, a monument sign or yeah, something? Monument. Your monument sign can't be bigger than your building. <laughs> right. <laughs> Are, so are you suggesting that we add a percentage then to the chart? I don't know if it goes in the chart or if it can just be something in the um, description before the chart. So under C on page, um, page 17 in your, so there's a description in there. Well, there's also, under D, under the, under the sign regulations on page 18, under freestanding signs, that talks about the total area of one freestanding sign face shall not exceed one square foot of surface area for every one foot 
of lineal street yeah. frontage, not to ex you know, and not to exceed the maximum aggregate sign yeah. phase. So that also does the same thing for freestanding. Okay. But it's related to the f frontage and not the building face. Yes. So we could add that as well, and have it just be whichever is. Okay, so well, by lineal street like frontage, we mean the, the building, right? Or do we mean the entire property? The, uh, it's the entire property. Because if we mean the building, mm -hmm. it, we would say the building frontage. Oh, I, I'm, I'm fine with the property. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to be clear. I think anybody would, hopefully nobody would want a sign that totally overshadows their building. <laughs> but you never know. So maybe a um, clarification in C, where we talk about the size, we should also have some um, cross-reference to the standards that are in section 157.006, that there's yeah. gonna be additional sign standards, yeah. okay. Excuse me, so let's jump into the sign standards. Um, <coughs> any questions about the ones that we've discussed last time? I had a question on the canopy signs. <clears throat> Would there be, we referenced the one canopy sign per side of fuel station canopies, but would there be other types of uses that that might be appropriate? Um, I'm not sure. I added that, I think because your gas station over here next to City Hall has signs on each side of the canopy, at least on three sides. Uh, so I didn't want to make them a non-conforming situation. Did we, well, one canopy sign per building facade, isn't that what that means? I mean. Well, the fuel station canopy isn't really part of the building. It's a separate structure. Mm -hmm. I'm still a little confused about what you're saying. If I, if there's a canopy on along the, let's say along the front of a facade and then there's a canopy along the side for maybe it has a side entrance mm -hmm. or something as well. Um, would one canopy sign per building facade, or you're just saying only uh, per building facade, that wouldn't allow a sign on both of those canop both of those sides? Um, I think the way it's written, if, if there was two sides of a building that are, you know, 90 degrees, Right. Each of those would be their own facade, and you could have a canopy on each side. Right. What's different about the the? I'm, I guess I'm don't pay that much of attention. What's different about the holiday next door? Is there something different about that? I'm trying to picture it. The canopy's not attached standards. to the building. Pardon me. It's not attached to the building. The canopy is freestanding. Well, but this says one canopy sign per side of fuel station canopies. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not a part of the structure. The building structure, it's its own structure outside. Oh, it's the fuel mm -hmm. state, this fuel station mm -hmm. portion yeah. of the. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So does Quick Trip have that too? I'm not sure. All of them do. That would my guess. The holiday down by me probably does too. So there's probably aren't other buildings that would have that. Okay. All right. So it really is just to prevent. I just don't like, it makes it seem like we're just allowing something to one type of business that we're not going to allow any other type of business to do. And that's why I was questioning it. I'm okay if that's the only kind now that I understand what you're actually getting at. I don't know if I can say with 
complete confidence that that's the only situation, but yeah, did want to bring it to our attention so that we weren't accidentally yeah, yeah. saying no to canopy signs on fuel stations. Could we just right. say um, one canopy sign per structure facade? Because that way it would cover both a building. There you go. But then that puts them out of compliance because they've got three on that canopy, one on each side of it. But yeah, if we're saying one per side of of, of the structure for each one, one, well, on one canopy side. per side of building or structure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, building and structure mean the same thing, technically. I I disagree from a zoning administrative standpoint. Well, from our definition, they do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What one says refer to the other one. <laughs> Can we say structure in this case? Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm going to write that down. So, one canopy. Yeah, that's an interesting situation. One canopy sign per structure, side of structure. Yeah. The yeah. yeah, like I say, I was just trying to think if there was something else. Nothing came to mind, but you never you never know. Okay. Okay. And then it looks like I have a, a formatting error under placement, B3 placement, um, four and five, I think, follow fall under that, and they should just be scooched over as A and B. Oh, okay. Okay, electronic message centers. We adjusted some things there. Okay, freestanding. Uh, we talked about that already. Mm -hmm. Internal wayfinding. Signs shall not exceed eight feet in height. Oh, I think I was just cleaning up. Uh, the formatting overall here. And I believe that this was something, a projecting was something that I added um, just for consistency with the other ones above in terms of the vertical clearance. Rooftop signs. This one I don't remember talking about. Um, may only be placed upon one-story buildings. And the separation of the sign from the roof line to the bottom of the sign shall not be greater than one foot. Oh, yeah, actually, I do remember talking about that. And then the wall. Actually, no, there's a window sign. That was the one that we had a hot, a hot discussion on last time. And I don't know that we came to a resolution on that. Oh, could, could I go back to projecting for a second? Sure. Um, to uh, item A, uh, shall have a minimum eight feet vertical clearance above sidewalk. That's repeated under three height, minimum eight feet vertical clearance above sidewalk. The height al also gives the minimum 14 feet vertical clearance when within five feet of a roadway. So we only need the eight vertical clearance above sidewalk or pathway once, I think. Yes. So whichever, it probably belongs under height. That's also the more complete one. I'm wondering if it, I don't think either one of those definitions as I'm looking at it now talks about like the actual size height of the sign. I think they're more saying how yeah. the distance between the ground and the bottom of the sign. Right. So do we want to have a cap on how far up it can go? Well, doesn't it say it won't can't it does under 3B. Let's well, square footage. Oh, 3B, sorry. Oh, I see. Got it. So I don't have a problem just doing the vertical clearance under height as well. I mean, okay. So I just didn't just didn't think we need to repeat the I, same I agree. thing. So then we would just eliminate two A. Yeah. Okay. Oops. 
Okay. Any other? Oh. Rooftop signs may only be placed on one-story buildings. Yeah, that one I'm not remembering where that came from. Let me look at my memo. Maybe it says... What do you think about that? Okay, so. Pardon me? Do we have any rooftop signs right now? Uh, we have loves. I'm thinking. Trying to picture. <laughs> For sure, I mean, that's the easy one because that stands out. I guess my question would be, why not a two-story building? Looking back at my notes, um, I was reviewing your downtown design guidelines, which I don't think I had done previously in context of the sign ordinance. And so I pulled in some of those, and I thought that's where that one story okay. came from. But um, a lot of the sign-related topics in that are going to be completely Right. We're not the window now with yeah. this new sign ordinance. Yeah, that needs a major, will need a major update. Yep, so if this doesn't make sense, then we can easily strike that. Well, I, I guess I'm struggling with why not on a two-story, especially because we've now got three-story buildings. Well, I think in a typical downtown, it would be not uncommon to have like a multi-story building with a projecting sign. Right. Like a... You know, well, especially when you got the highway and the path, you know, the gateway going by, it just makes it more visible. Sure. So strike. Potentially. H2. Well, I'm just bringing that up. Yeah. I don't know how everybody else feels about it. I'm good with striking it. You're good with striking it? Yeah. Anybody not want to strike it? We can always put it. Right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, people are going to want to put it where it can be seen. Yeah. And some businesses, it is kind of hard to see them. Yeah, and what I was thinking about is the downtown area. You know, if, if you're putting it on a two-story building, three-story building, it's not really going to be visible from the street. Right. So, you know, either somebody's thinking about the highway, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that's a good, a good call. Okay, wall signs. I'm okay with that. Look how oh, simple. I'm, sorry, I'm confusing it with window signs. Window signs are the ones that we were confused with, or not confused, but trying to determine if one third of the surface area of the window was appropriate. So we went to one third for permanent. This is for permanent window signs, not temporary. You can still have a temporary sign as well as the permanent sign. Oh, right. And so the, the, is the neon sign in the window permanent or temporary was kind of the question that was left unresolved. Well, since it uses electricity, it's probably more permanent than not. But, I mean, I, I think with that one, it really just gets into how much of the window do you want visible. And this is, every, this is in every district, too. It's not just the downtown, even though we pay the most attention downtown, I think. Um, but, you know, would, let's see, would an example help has the, um, what's that business that's, that lift, star lift, oh, star lift. have they put up their signs yet, their window signs? Yeah, star lift put in an application for their window signage, um, 
and they had too much. And it, it wasn't too much to my eye, but it was too much based on the regulations. Based on the one third? No, based on whatever your current code is. The 25? Because I think it's 25% now. Let's see. Pretty low. Window signs. Is that MU, MU1 downtown? Yeah. It's 20%. Oh, 20. Oh. So this goes, gives them another 13. Okay, so that might resolve their issue. And it didn't look visually to you like too much. No. And another thing that they had brought up, <clears throat> and we advised them against, <coughs> because we weren't, you know, because we're not really sure what's in this, you know, um, how to interpret it as it exists now, but they had um, talked about tinting. And Oh, tinting the window? Yeah, in addition to their signs and kind of the point of your window coverage is so that you're not preventing people from seeing inside. Yeah. So we kind of guided them away from that, but but still they're not able to put up all of the window signage that they had initially wanted under this 20% rule. They got a lot of window there, I guess. Yeah, they had these icons that were kind of in each window pane. Yeah. And then another like rectangular one at the bottom. Okay. Well, I don't have a problem with a third. I understand the trying to keep transparency into the building. That's kind of a safety thing as well. Should um, we add something to that effect? What? Is that something about tinting, because that's not addressed in the draft or your existing ordinance. As to why, well, it, it would make sense if we want to limit it. Well, that's true. Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, how does everybody think, what do you think about the one-third figure? Too, too little? Too much? Just right? <laughs> I'd go up to a half myself. <laughs> Only because it's like, you know, especially if... There's so many things you can do with a window sign. You know, a lot of times it's cursive. It's just not as in your face mm -hmm. as other types of signage. So even though it's not all, you know, see-through, it's, it's muted. It's more muted, maybe, is the way I'll put it. So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with a third. I wouldn't want to go any lower than that. And also keeping in mind, people can also have you know, non-permanent signage that they add if they have like a, a special or, you know, some sale or something like that going on. Kind of leaning towards the half for you. That's, that's one of the options. And a lot of them, depending, the depending on what their business is, they're mm -hmm. going to want to s allow people to see what they're selling mm -hmm. as they go by. So that makes a difference too, but mm -hmm. go ahead. One of them is the, you know, just aesthetic. Uh, how does it look? And I, I get a little concerned about filling too much of the window with, you know, brightly lit signs. Um, that can feel like it's, you know, kind of, uh, I don't know, not really looking very aesthetically pleasing. Um, you know, how much we want to manage that, I don't know. Um, I'm okay with a third. I, you know, I wonder if half the window with neon signs um, makes a lot of sense in some areas. If, in case we do get flooded. Yeah, and I think it's hard because we're doing a universal thing here. Say, you know, it's split it out to where it's you can every have, area. You know, a neon a third and other. Well, a lot of people don't, I, have, don't have neon in the windows. Like I said, they have cursive or they have, you know, like that hair salon. Down exactly. They just got it written across their whole front. I was paying attention to that when I drove down 7th mm -hmm. the other day, and I noticed how many windows have the cursive. Yes. You know, they don't have a sign. They Well, it is a sign, but it's not something uh, hanging in the window. It's yeah. on the window. Mm -hmm. And that, that is actually what we're talking about is something on the window. 
And I understand the neon sign thing, but to me that's just, you know, you can hang that from a window, obviously, and that's fine, but you could hang any other kind of lights from your window as well. Mm -hmm. um, I so I think it's kind of a... Written, most are, yeah. I don't think there's that many neon I've, down there. I think there's more written... I mean, I know the... the yes, that, uh, that's one I noticed mm -hmm. next door that has, you know, a little bit of neon, but... I know we don't want to invite... Um, Variance requests, but this, if, we're, if we would ever be okay with it, it seems like this would be an instance where we would be more um, hesitant in the ordinance. And then if there is a special, you know, instance, we would, we could yeah. grant that. But I, is that, that would be tough. Opening a door mm -hmm. we don't want to open. That would be tough to find un unique circumstances for variance purposes. Can we split it, like I said? Well, I, I mean, town, downtown versus... No, just neon versus, so a third neon, a half if it's just regular painted A sign? third if it's lit, or exactly. half if, uh, regardless of how it's lit. Yes, exactly. That's, well, that's the only thing I was getting at. Mm -hmm. um, a third seems like a lot, but maybe not. Pardon me? I, I, I was just saying that a third might be a lot for a lit sign. In your window? <coughs> I mean, the only lit signs I can think of are like the Newman's Neon or like the open. Yeah, open or close, yeah. That would applies here. I've seen, oh, I've seen open and Newman's, and that's about it. I'm trying to think looking of. looking at something. Was it Newman's? I was not, no. Oh. Yeah. Because um, I was, um, I'm. After our last meeting, I went and was trying to calculate how big that was, and it was coming up close to 50% of those neon signs. Was it? I think so. Maybe 50 is the right number. Well, but it's, you know, those windows are But small. it's a lot. I was going to say but the it's downtown a lot. windows are, are fairly small. Yeah. The buildings are Well, that's the other thing, too. Some windows are small. Some are large. Yeah, the one with the lift place, that's the old drugstore, so their windows are huge yeah. across the whole entire property. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's what you know, that's what makes it tougher. Some, that window's so small it doesn't matter if you cover the whole thing up almost because there's nothing there to start with. I mean, we can leave it at a third. I'm certainly okay with that. I, I kind of am hesitant to try to break it up by lit versus yeah. unlit. Yeah, it just complicates. Yeah, <laughs> makes my brain hurt. <laughs> I mean, you don't, if you don't want to go any larger, you know, if we want to start with a third and see, well, you know, we have time before they gets, this gets, you know, to the stage where we're going to be recommending. We've got at least another month. We can still think about it and look around a little bit. Well, the question I have is the people that ask for this now, is there's closer to a third what they want? Or how big? Starlift? Right now, 20%. Yeah. Starlift. They were... Um, I don't remember their numbers. They had, if you will, like a bigger sign in the middle of each panel. And then the bottom, they had a rectangular like word thing that represents what the icon is. So they had to lop off one of those rectangles, I think, saying what the icon meant. To get under 20. To get under, yeah. So they might be OK at a third. I, I feel like they would be. Um, That's what I'm asking is if we do a third, if we give it a third, would they be good? Yeah, I think so. Because okay. I also told them, you know, you were looking at this. Just yeah. maybe come back in a little bit and see if we can. Yeah, I don't think we have. It's not maybe some of the brightness, you know, and maybe that's going to be handled somewhere else. Is, you know, if they're too bright, then that becomes the, you know, or too contrasty, that becomes the issue. Whereas if it's a little more subtle, then, you know, I'm not as concerned about the amount of area. Yeah, as yeah. I am about the brightness. Well, and that's, uh, like I say, I can't even think of any other lit signs other than little open, you know, and the... Well, the, the shop and the tobacco shop. Yeah. Custom the tobacco shop I n noticed 
and I don't even know how much they had, but theirs are the attention getting, yeah. you know, type. That's what that's all about. Where's your tobacco store? It's or right in the, holiday. right it's next to the, to the holiday. down from, yeah, so by the holiday. The holiday. Oh, just next door? Yeah. yeah. I noticed it because it was changing. Hmm. It was kind of shifting from one. It wasn't dwelling for eight seconds. Well, it's, mm. it's not an electronic message sign. It's Maybe just on and okay. off, I think. Oh. It's what might be considered a flashing sign. I couldn't tell at first which place I had it. One question, Brandy, that you had before about the window tent. Uh huh. Now they face south and they got a lot of windows. Is that tent to have them keep their place cooler? I'm not sure. Well, that's something where, if we're talking about energy in town and things like that, I mean, that's facing south and they got some huge windows that could really affect their. That's a good point. And, well, one of you brought it up that that's not really a sign issue. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just saying, but you, you discouraged them. You I did. So then thinking because they were something. asking the question in relation to the sign. Okay. Well, maybe that's something that could be clarified to them is, you know, it's not part of the signs and mm -hmm. it is not what we were talking about because I, with those old windows, they don't have much thermal in between them. Yeah. So I'm sure they'll bake. New windows mm -hmm. or some shades of some kind. So we're okay with a third, third. for now? Yeah. yeah. And then we can all walk up and down the streets <laughs> and... With our tape measures. Verify. Yeah, with our tape measures. <laughs> I think the one that strikes me, and we talk about Newman's, but is Paperback Plus. Oh, she's... If you've ever... Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Pass it around. Sure. <laughs> and, it, you know, it's that like to me, it's minutes. like... <laughs> yeah, just pulled it up on... Google oh. images. I pass around at Newman's, but this will work, I guess. <laughs> Don't, can't we get up to, uh, we can't get to paperbacks? Paper, yeah. Well, you know, and it's a bar, too, so you kind of expect oh, I didn't even something a little the brighter. I never really looked at the front no, the I didn't notice windows. that either. Huh. But Paperback Books has quite a few little signs in their window, but it's, uh, some of it is just the way that window well, is designed. Upstairs, huh? So, <laughs> a little anyway. Okay, now that we've all admired the display. I just like to see an apple that works. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> Here, why don't you look at this? Perhaps, why don't you shoot hers, yours down, down there to her? Can, <laughs> can you okay. it this way? I'm curious yeah. to see what you're looking at. And there is an, I did add a, was looking at another tab um, of just like a random business. Um, it was out of Minneapolis, but the, yeah, they have a lot of their signs. It looks nice. I don't know, maybe it doesn't look nice. Never measured how much it is. Anyway, okay. So, <coughs> did we land on a third? Yeah. Yes. yeah, we're <laughs> sticking with that un unless something strikes us. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, I took out the downtown district overlay district regulations because it really was kind of rendered moot um, at this point. Yeah, I noticed that on your on your table of contents. You'll have to delete that from there as well, and then renumber the stuff going forward from here. I did renumber the rest, but I guess I didn't update the table. Of yeah. Good catch. Okay, multi-tenant buildings. Changing. Multi-tenant reference there. Okay, so standards for non-permanent signs. So we changed all the temporary. Temporaries to non-permanents. Oh, could I just ask now, on the multi-tenant buildings, so is there a permit request for the Sentinel? I would expect there's been one. Um, I don't think I've seen one. Oh, okay. Do they have signs up? No. Oh, well, maybe they just haven't brought it I in yet. the apartment building's probably going to have a sign. It's going to be the, the diner. Halls once they open up. Mm -hmm. Well, I... Th I think they'd want to identify who they are of some 
some kind of sign. <laughs> I, have, I haven't seen a permit. Even an address. <laughs> Well, I didn't see anything today when I went by. I've seen that before, but I didn't see anything today, so I was just curious. Okay. Well, the space there right across the street, they had a sentinel sign in, but they moved over that year. Yeah, okay. Oh, on the, the master sign plan mm -hmm. under the multi-tenant, it says on F, on page 20, after approval of a master signage plan, who approves it? Um, the zoning administrator. Okay, should we maybe put that in there? Just to make it clear? Sure. I just didn't see that anywhere. Okay, moving on to the non-permanent signs. Um, we changed the word ground mounted to just freestanding. I'm sorry, where are we? Um, <laughs> non-permanent. Oh, okay, sign. okay. So there's a lot of changes in here, but I think it's mostly just clean up. Um, and then we, let's see. We took the political sign and neon sign out, and then some of the language from the political sign we moved to the top related to now, Minnesota statutes. If I could, I want to bring up here what I mentioned earlier in that chart about the sign types, uh -huh. where they're allowed. Because under location, B talks about a wall sign, a type of sign, right? C talks about a freestanding sign, and D talks about a freestanding sign. And I'm wondering if we shouldn't maybe make that clear there. Those are sign types, and those are allowed under, you know, in R1 and R2. Well, we, sh we could do an asterisk for freestanding and those other. Well, uh, I guess every other place. I mean, we go down to C, here's the specific regulations by type of non-permanent sign. Then we get into A-frame, banner sign, bus sign. Mm -hmm. We're just kind of lumping freestanding under general regulations location, and I'm not sure why we're not treating it as a type of sign. Oh, I think because there's so many varieties of those different signs. Yeah, but there's not that many varieties of non-permanent ones. <laughs> of a freestanding non-permanent? Yeah. There aren't that many that are, you know, however we define non-permanent, but they're easily just plunked yeah, down. Yeah, I guess I didn't have a name for those, but freestanding is the name for those. Uh, well, I, I think that's fine because they are freestanding. Okay, so it should, so freestanding should have its own category. Well, I, yeah, I guess I don't understand why they don't. And the same thing with a wall sign. Okay. Because that B, C, and D all deal with a specific type of sign. So I think those should be under C, yep, I along with that. the other types. If that makes sense, it, it does. I was, I think I was overcomplicating it, just trying to get I was fixated on what to call these freestanding free signs. I know, calling them, you know, yard signs. I know. Okay, that's easy enough. Any other? Oh, <clears throat> under B, B. Five, I, I personally. I think item bullet five should go just above bullet four. B5 should go above B4? Yeah. I mean, it seems to flow better. Because 
you're talking about the limits. Or two and three, I guess, if I'm looking at the numbering. Two talks about how many, three talks about the aggregate area, and then that Minnesota statute thing gets at the signs of any size, maybe. And it, it just seems to flow better to put that exemption right after or that above maintenance. Of, that one's kind of dealing with duration. Would it make sense to put an under limit? Yes, I think that's that's where the question has come. That's what people talk about. They don't talk about you know the duration. They talk about I can have as many signs as I want. So I can move. All I'm saying is just swap, move four, make item five, number four, and make number four and number five. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Just put maintenance as the last lit item in the list. Okay. Okay. I only had one other thing on that page, and that was item C, 1C, where we're eliminating the don't leave it on the sidewalk overnight. Yeah, I, I don't recall why we took that out. I don't even recall talking about it. I wonder if that was in your um, design guidelines, which... Doesn't make sense. It should stay. That, I mean, that's the logical. Okay. Yeah. So re, reinstate C one C. Okay. So. Got rid of neon and got rid of political signs. Oh, here's window signs again. <laughs> uh, should we change that to 25%? Which? The, I'm sorry, the limitation on the area for window signs. You mean, should we change it to a third or should A third, that's what I meant. <laughs> okay. Now, this is in addition to the third of for permanent signs. So now we're talking two thirds. Do you want two thirds? I don't care. It's fine with me. I mean, this, this <laughs> is, you know, when you're talking a window sign, people are going to put what they think is going to bring them business. Oh, this is just. <laughs> right? painful. <laughs> well, if we don't like it, we can still change it back, but I, you know, I'm just okay with it. Okay, but hold on. <laughs> so we have that table at the top that deals with aggregates. Right. Does that include our temporary? Yeah, I think I re read that it did. Let me go back and find that language. <laughs> Oh, and that says represent the maximum aggregate square footage of all permanent signs. But there was something else that, something else in here somewhere I read. Oh, that's under... Oh, okay. Sorry. So um, under the non-permanent signs, under B, A, I'm sorry, B3. Right. Oh, did you find it too at the same time? Right. So that means two-thirds. I read that as you can have. Okay. So we're good with that? We're good. Okay. Okay. Almost done. Prohibited signs. <coughs> no change. <coughs> Exemptions. You can have your children's playhouse outside, and you can have your seasonal decorations. OK. 
Okay, and we go ahead. Is there a way to p combine four and six? Where are we at? Where are we at? Oh, Jesus. oh, under exemptions. <clears throat> Thank you. Oops, I should. Oh, it's not working. <laughs> that it? Okay. Sorry, where were you? <laughs> Is there a way to combine four and six? Under exemptions. Yes. Four and six. I'm just asking. It oh. seems kind of silly to have seasonal, dec you know, holiday, seasonal decorations or holiday decorations or seasonal decorations. It just seems to me. Oh no, we got to make sure that the inflatable is okay. <laughs> yeah, you do, ha because we don't allow inflatables for anything else. So we do have to, you know, it, say that that includes inflatable. How about inflatable or other? Yes, seasonal decorations. We don't have to even have holiday. Okay. We didn't have it before for seasonal decorations. Fall. So I got the Halloween pumpkin too. That's not a holiday, really. Halloween. Right. Well, Halloween is a big holiday, <laughs> but it's an entire off, season. <laughs> okay. Um, Non-conforming <clears throat> signs kind of just stuck with the changes we talked about last time. Uh, abandoned signs. I changed director to zoning administrator. I think I just did that. I don't know if I was directed to do that. And that is all. Yeah. Nice job. Only one page worth of notes tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that's just because you have a lot of verbiage, that's all. Wasn't that many. Can I, um, <laughs> can I ask a clarifying question on page 18? It says internal wayfinding. What's the difference between internal wayfinding, wayfinding, and external wayfinding? Is this part of the sign ordinance? Mm hmm page uh, 18 of the PDF or the oh. whole document. What is internal wayfinding versus wayfinding? Yeah. That's your question. Do I define wayfinding? No. Um, internal wayfinding is a common term used in sign ordinances. And if you imagine that you're in a, a hospital complex and you need to get to the emergency room or maternity it's those internal sign internal to the development that are directional gotcha usually it's on private property yes they're not public signs gotcha thank you mm -hmm. it's coming together i'm surprised at how fast it's coming together to be honest just because sign ordinances can be a nightmare that can go on for years <laughs> in some communities. Well, you're just doing such a fine job. That's not going to happen, Brandy. My, my first experience with sign ordinances, the mayor in that community was in the sign business. <laughs> 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 now, one you of the... a lot of signs, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. The, one of the things we had talked about, and I think it's <clears throat> probably at that stage, with just the few, what I think are really minor changes we talked about tonight is to maybe get this to, if possible, the business association or the maybe the EDA just to kind of not necessarily in all that much detail, but just an, even an overview of here's the changes or you know what's being proposed because people don't really want to sit and read through the ordinance necessarily. <laughs> especially when we're talking for business purposes. <clears throat> so I'm thinking that still could at least give that opportunity before we would you know, do a public hearing and get to that stage in case there's something that we've potentially missed entirely. Any thoughts? I like 
kind of I think that's worthwhile when you get something that you know so um, aware to the people that it impacts as well as kind of some of the you know their feedback early on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not significantly different, so it shouldn't be shocking, but it also, I think, is, is more generous mm -hmm. than what we've had in place. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I also am wondering about getting it to city staff before it goes too far as well. Just, is this practical in terms of how you would expect to enforce this? Is the key question? <laughs> Which staff, like police or? Well, code enforcement. Yeah. Oh. If they're enforcing this code. Yeah. Would this work? Or do you have suggestions that would make that more uh, manageable? I think that's a good suggestion. I'm not yeah, sure. That would be staff doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure who the code enforcement staff is. So. Would you like us to, before the next meeting, have that? I can if you, fix this if up. If you could. Send it on, get comments from them. Okay, yeah. so code enforcement, anybody else? I mean, I, it's like any other code enforcement, there's always technical details. It's, but it's not all that technical, actually, when it comes right down to it. Well, hopefully it's easier to administer, yeah. and it is good to have another set of eyes on it. Yeah. That's in this sort of work to poke holes in. Well, and I think Lisa and other staff can speak to the permit process, you know, that that seems reasonable. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, we'll plan on that. So we'll. I'll work with Lisa to get comments from from code enforcement. Okay. Bring those back. Okay. Um, and then the only other thing is potentially coming up with some kind of uh, page or two speaking document Somewhere. to use for like outside groups, you know, like the Business Association and, or the EDA, rather than, you know, a 10-page, read the code and tell us what you think. Yeah, right. Yep, that's a good idea. So we can provide that, too, for next meeting, and then you can okay. have comments on that. Yeah, and maybe next, what is it? what's our meeting date next month? Oh, the fifth. Okay, so that actually would be before the EDA meeting. Yeah. Isn't that the second the week? Second so potentially that would be something that could, that you know, be passed on to them, and that doesn't create a delay of any kind. Then yeah. <clears throat> I don't know when the business association. I don't even know if they have a regular schedule. So maybe somebody could check on that. Oh, it is, okay, okay. Because it looks to me like we'll be in summer ready to go forward. <coughs> okay. Now we're gonna, anybody else have any input before we move on to item B? Because now we're going to do some speed talking, right. and try. To, we're going to try to get out of here at a good time tonight. <laughs> so, item B is the 2022 work plan. Is that you, Lisa, or is that you, Brandy? Oh, um, yeah. Do you mind bringing that up? I, it's basically just reiterating what we talked about last month, and then after our plan commission meeting. Um, WSB staff met with John Stark, the city administrator, to kind of go through your items. And then he added a couple of more. 
Sorry, what page is I'm that? not seeing it here. Oh, there it is. Okay. 23 of the packet. Town furnishings. Down. Okay, so what we added was um, an amendment to your subdivision ordinance, which has been flagged by the city attorney and by staff. Oh, okay. Having some deficiencies, one of which being that I'm aware of is the lack of a minor subdivision process. So anytime somebody wants to do a, a replat or just a simple subdivision, it's got to go through the whole okay. preliminary and final plat, okay. which is expensive and it's time consuming and yeah. it could be a lot simpler. And Okay. Um, and the other thing is CIP review um, for comprehensive plan compliance. So that's an annual process. You did it last fall. So we're just going to put it on the work plan so it doesn't get oh, for forgotten. Yearly, or... the annual thing. Yep. Okay. And... <clears throat> Yeah, those, just those two things were what was added. And so I just put those closer to the top of the priority list. But if you guys want to take a look at this and see if you agree with the, the itemization of how things are listed. Well, I like the, well, we, the in progress. So we're talking for the other 2022. I mean, some of them, it would sound like the subdivision one and the zoning map makes sense to have those up there, especially if, you know, the minor subdivision thing in particular, that makes sense. One thing that I can comment on is for the wayfinding plan, that is being discussed in a number of mm -hmm. other commissions as well. Yeah. So the sooner the better, but that'll be your decision and priority. I know. I, I, I'm struggling with the, more than anything, with the downtown design manual because we refer to that in zoning code. And, you know, it's so out of date now that we just need to do something with it. We need to decide what we're going to do with it. Um, because it's, there's a lot in there, and, you know, some of it's really good, and some of it is just, it doesn't make sense. I would, I would agree with that. It's... Um... There are some recommendations in there that do make sense, and they were pulled forward for the redevelopment master plan project, and some of them that just are now no longer in alignment with the direction that the city is going. So um, there is recommendations in that redevelopment plan that we're working on now to update that design guideline document. So it, I don't know. It's going to be one of those things that probably you're going to need an outside group to, to manage it because it's one of those graphically... Um, intensive, I guess, kind of a document, I would imagine. Well, a lot of the, see, what I l actually like about it is a lot of the generic graphics. Oh, okay. It's when it starts getting into the details that I think we don't need to do that. I see. We need to give a picture of this is what we want to see, but we don't have to, you know, do it at, that, at the degree it's done is really what I'm thinking more. And I don't know if anybody's looked at that manual recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but it is more of a vision kind of thing than a detailed... Yeah, I don't think it needs to be as detailed as it is because a lot of, you know, what matters is already in zoning code. Mm -hmm. and, to, and the mistake in the manual was, you know, addressing things that are in zoning code. So when zoning code changes, now the manual's out of date. Mm -hmm. And if you just have something that's going to work no matter... Because we're not going to change significantly what we'd like the downtown to look like. Right. Um, so that's my take, as I could see just ripping out a lot of stuff and leaving the, the good stuff. Then that might be a much easier project than what I had. Does everybody have a copy of it that, I mean, maybe, but. It's on your website. Yeah. Is it? Yep. Okay. Sometimes those things are hard to find. Um, but maybe look through it and see what you think. Because I, ha I just, last time I looked at it, I thought, well, this is good, this is good. And then it started getting into detail. And I thought, why did we do this? But that was so long ago. It was 2005. So. <laughs> An another thing to think about in r relation to this work plan is the fact that you're going to likely have a new community development director on staff that may have some other things. Or, or other priorities. They have priorities that yeah. might impact this. So I don't yeah. know how, I mean, is it your intent that this is like a, 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 you act on this? Should I have prepared a resolution 
Well, uh, my intent was that at least we've alerted, you know, the city manager and the council oh, okay. as to what it is we You're think is on, on our plate that we need to get done. It's more what we need to get done. Okay, so this is more of an informal document that is So that can be budgeted tool. for, number one, to make sure that these things don't just keep, they're just not always on the back burner and no movement is made. Okay, so it's, it's a tool of communication between this body and city. And for us, too, yeah. And if they, you know, if the council disagrees, no, you don't have to do that, then okay, fine. <laughs> but... I think it's a good idea for for them to understand what, what it is that you're prioritizing as yeah. project. Yeah, and they might have priorities we haven't mm -hmm. heard of yet. Okay, so any changes to the lineup? Nope. I'll just reiterate. I think I'll just ask commissioners to to take a glance through the downtown design manual and see if you think that is something we could attack without having to you know, go through a whole rewrite process. I mean, I haven't looked at it now for a bit of time, but it struck me at the time that we potentially could and really strip it down. Lisa, did you mention we should maybe think about moving wayfinding plan up? That was the suggestion I had based on conversations that I've had sure. with another Yeah, yeah, Parks and Rec are having conversations about that, as is um, the uh, and Rotary Park for um, business wayfinding signs. So a um, lot of conversation around that. Yeah. And park and Rec, um, I think they're going to move forward because the wayfinding plan was approved by council in 2016. But, and this is something in my staff report, um, just the very beginning the first phase is actually complete I, and I don't know for sure there were two things itemized on there I know one of the pieces here has been completed that's the piece with the monument sign um, and I'm not sure where we're at with the other two things but after that nothing nothing else yeah. has been started yeah well actually it's probably not a a bad idea to look at it anyway, just to look at placement of various things now that we've had some development occur mm -hmm. since that was written too, because a lot of it was where exactly. signs really are a good idea, you know, and where they're going to be valuable for their purpose is to help people find their way around. Mm -hmm. um, and some of it also, there was some downtown, you know, the kiosks, I, the kiosk idea downtown as well that. Um, you know, would need to fit in somehow. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I know there's a, uh, it's an interesting, that, that was an odd plan. I wonder if we should move it up to like a number four, maybe right after some of those staff added ones. On the in progress? Or on this, on the? The wayfinding, I'm still thinking mm. about that wayfinding. Whatever. Did everybody have a chance to look through it? Yeah, it's, it's. You think that'll be a lengthy process now that this, the design has been finalized? It's just a matter of executing what's in there. I think it's more execution and, and maybe determining does it still, does some of the execution still make sense? I know, I'm sure that all the street signs haven't been done. Street names. I know that for sure. I think most of the parking lots were. Your street, your street names were part of the wayfinding. Is yeah. that why? Oh, yeah. And some got changed. Mm -hmm. Some haven't. Um, so again, it's maybe reprioritizing more than anything else. I'm a little curious and help me understand what the role is of Plan Commission and the wayfinding project per se because it sounds like the design is already done and now it's really just a matter of budgeting for mm -hmm. for installing them mm -hmm. it might be more of a cip slash council it's project. part of the cip process and that's where it plays a role in the cip i see 
It's one of those implementation plans. It was in the comprehensive plan to okay. develop a wayfinding plan. So it's less of a project, but more of a, we want to keep our eye on this to make sure it gets yes. covered. Okay. Although I do think now is a good time to you know, rethink, does it still make sense? Mm -hmm. Again, mainly because of some redevelopment that's occurred, and maybe there are pla different plans now that would impact some of it. I don't, can't think of too many, but you never know because there were specific types of, of signs at specific locations. And they were the primary wayfinding. They were the real communication signs. Those haven't been done. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't even know. I mean, somebody will have to do the re-projecting of the costs, too. That's been quite a number of years. I, mean, I don't even know. Well, we've been discussing that at the staff level to try to figure yeah, out I'm sure where they, the budget is. Yeah. And I don't know that... I don't think there is one yet. That, that's exactly it. We haven't found one. Yeah, I think the only budget so far is for the uh, park signs. There has I don't think there's any budget anywhere else. I remember the meeting where the council approved it, but they were very specific about they weren't willing to spend any additional money, you know, or commit to any additional spending other than the initial piece that was done. Um, I think at that time, anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. The rest of the phasing never got done. So there's really not, aside for confirming that the costs haven't changed significantly, and that that is truly still in the budget as it was, not something that would need to be asked of the finance director. Um, well, it was never <coughs> ever considered during the budget process after that first phase. It was. That I recall, other than this last one where it was just specific to the park signs and they weren't actually an initial part of it. But that's, we can get into that when, when we are got all the information. Oh, we're kind of down to The plan was approved. The implementation piece of it wasn't. It wasn't, okay. But the phase one part of implementation was. Um, there was a lengthy discussion at that council meeting. That I recall. Okay. Um, so again, it, it, it's not a big sticking point as far as I'm concerned. All I'm saying is that the money hasn't just routinely been carried over from year to year because it wasn't, the phase two was never allocated. Okay. Um, Noted. So I think as long as everybody's kind of getting involved in the wayfinding thing, it, I mean, from my perspective, for us, it's more just a matter of does this still fit mm -hmm. with, okay. you know, the development that's going on or the development that's planned. Okay, and, so Well, I don't know if anybody else is proposing any changes to it. You said other people are working on it, too, so I don't know. 
what anybody else is doing. I think it's just been brought up in conversation that we Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well then let's review it. Let's all review it. Yeah, that wasn't part of wayfinding, really. Right, right. So sure that's a separate yeah. thing. Yeah. Do um, you have that same style to be consistent with your... I have no idea what yeah, that's they're what planning. Closing, oh, okay. That was just a verbal from to the city manager that it would be consistent in design. Okay. Hmm. I'd be interested to see that. I can't picture it. You want, I can send you, not now, but I can send you. Oh, so like some templates or something? Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Do it, send it to okay. everyone. Okay. Well, once they decide, I will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a couple versions <laughs> right now that they're deciding on, so yeah, I will do that. I just keep thinking the white with the blue, it's like, that's so boring. Anyway, okay. So we did see and we did reports from staff already, by the way, Lisa, now, because that was way status of wayfinding. But we're still on 6D. Yeah. Is that the EDA meeting? But okay, so that's <coughs> solicited agenda topics. That what that's for? Yeah, okay. requested that at the last meeting. We'd like to discuss that. The president meeting will be coming up in... Now it's got postponed, right? It did, and we don't have a definite date yet. It was supposed to be the 21st. Um, that's okay. proposed for a May term, and I did get the majority of those that did respond to say that that would work, but nothing has been confirmed yet. Well, may, hmm. oh, that's right. That's a joint meeting. Okay. Anything you all think of? I'm trying to decide if that would be a good forum to just do an overview of the sign ordinance changes. I mean, there'll be a quorum of any everybody, but it's not like there'll be any decision making. It really would just be for any feedback. Yeah, because they, they might be more connected to what, you know, specific businesses are, have already asked for, and that seems like a good time to do it. Especially if they have a general summary. Yeah, that's why if we have that gen at the next meeting, if we have that general summary, then we've got it ready to go. Anything else? If, I mean, if you think of anything, you can email Lisa. Does the EDA set help set the agenda? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, I mean, it's usually quite generic. Yeah, the intention was to, the intention was to make sure each commission is aware of what the other commission is doing. That was the point of forming these joint meetings yeah. quarterly. I mean, we could certainly share our little work list. <laughs> little, I'll call sure. it little. I mean, we talk, we've mentioned a couple things, but not all of, not all of the ones that are now on the list. Would you be expecting a presentation from me regarding the sign ordinance? Would you be comfortable doing it? I, I mean, again, it's, it would be fine I, if we've got like a couple pages of bullet points. I think that's, that's main. Your way. I mean, definitely the summary pages. That's Whatever the that. date that you're not available, though. Oh, so <laughs> I thought you hadn't figured that one out yet. <laughs> well, that's what they're proposing at this point. That may change. So there's a possibility. There's a possibility that Brandy may not be able to attend 
um, but we won't know until the date is finalized. Which date was that? May 10th. So I know I talked to you about <laughs> so, um, I might have a conflict. I don't know. It's a city council meeting, and I might have to be there. Um, well, if we've got a presentation, it would be great if you could, but otherwise I think we could use a, you know, we'd have a presentation. I think we could do that and then answer some basic questions. And I don't see it being too very detailed. Well, and it is the EDA. Yeah. And it's not like, I, I would imagine that they have some sense of what's in a sign ordinance and how yeah. it's hopefully more streamlined than the right. previous version. Right. <coughs> As opposed to just showing it to the general public who mm -hmm. never have to deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and we did add like the, some detail around things like the permit and the appeal process, mm -hmm. which wasn't even, we didn't even have before. You know, in writing. Okay. <coughs> so it's all up to you to be ready on May at our May meeting with all of these things. <laughs> and again, if you have anything else that you can think of, just feel free to email Lisa. Um, downtown Furniture Design Review Standards. Okay, I actually have not had time to do, I know you asked me to do some okay. research, and if we're going to move forward with that, we will have to hire out with WSB or another firm because I've done what I can, and I actually, I, I just wouldn't have time to put more together. I don't, I recall that, you know, you have a couple examples of yes. styles, and I mean, how much detail do you think we want to try to come up with or to provide? It's on their dime, you know. Yeah, I, I think it's real general. I think it's generally these color shades, make sure it's durable and it's not going to create a hazard. Um, right. And, and Food you know, safe. Is what you're saying. Here's what the style ought to be. Or yeah. Like well, I mean, I don't mind doing it. Here's what preferred but you know we certainly don't want to dictate I don't think right and that's like getting into different samples and whatnot um, for presentation it would be basically dictating or trying to persuade them to go in one direction or another and you know. yeah I think the biggest thing for us was making sure that it was quality of some level yeah. and I mean what is the council expecting because you know the mayor's what who asked for this and I guess I'm a little unclear here exactly what do they look what's the council looking for I, I would say essentially we're just looking for um, some direction and, and quality of the materials that was the biggest topic was we don't really want to see the white plastic chairs because they can also break and whatnot. So, okay. So, do um, you th is it reasonable to get something that generic for the May meeting? Something put together? Do you think between? The, I mean, because it doesn't have to be all that detailed. As far as you know, we want quality. Something that's what weatherproof, commercial grade. So. Pardon me? Um, Durable, yeah. Commercial, yeah. Yeah, commercial grade. Is, so is, do you want to go that far? Some basic specs, I think, would be easy enough. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I mean, that's I'm, something we'll want to get out here pretty soon, too. Yeah. Um, especially with supply chains and we right. don't know right. how long that's it's going to take businesses. Right around the corner here, probably another couple more. of months. A couple <laughs> of months, it'll be spring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to just put together exactly what you're looking for and then I can type it up? I mean, if you itemize the things, I can type it up if that's what you're asking me to do. You want to do that? Me? No, about, I'm just looking at this side and then I'm looking at that side. Look at that side first. I'm looking. Oh, okay. I'll look at this side first. <laughs> if, go ahead. 
I, I mean, you almost I like this little comparison document you put together. It it almost seems like you've done the bulk of the work. It's just we identify that we like the commercial grade. You know, do we steer them towards particular materials? It sounds like we want to maybe stay away from wood if it's if they're serving food on it potentially. Or do you want to worry Sealed, as such fine. that you yeah. want something that's going to be weather resistant materials? Right. Maybe just a list of bullets, like you say, of, yeah. of commercial grade, sealed wood or wrought iron or aluminum materials of antique style. Meeting any any sort of material specifications. I'm sure there's some ASTM references or something if you want to get super nerdy about it. But there also yeah. is some good, you know, heavy duty plastic. By the yard has some good furniture and it's all plastic, you know. Yeah. And there's there's cheap plastic and there's I think even if you just use the images that you already have here, yeah, just say these are examples of, you know, you don't have to buy this particular one. I wouldn't even, you know, we don't have to say the cost or where it's from or anything, but I think just visually these are, you know, what, what would be preferred. Yeah. And because uh, we know downtown just from the preference of you know, during the survey for the downtown preference was for the antique look. Um, so that makes sense. You know, we've got a lot of ideally, you know, wrought iron is the thing that's, you know, preferred. But this, you know, this is temporary stuff. It's not a permanent fixture that we're talking about. So yeah, I think, and I don't know if there were any more adjectives on any of the other pages, but I remember seeing that page thinking, well, that's what we're looking for. You know, that kind of, describe what we want and maybe I like that idea of using you know just the photo piece of the various samples mm -hmm. that you have I think that gives enough information okay. for this is what we're looking for yeah, these are examples. yeah and then the council can decide is that enough or do you want to you know if they want to be more specific in some category that would be fine sure so I have Durable, commercial grade, weather resistant, and then I'll include the visual examples. Of yeah. This is something that we prefer. Yeah. Okay. And so from there, do I present back to you or do we go to council with that? Well, they asked us to look. How do you want to hand, how should we handle that? Do you feel like the information that's here is, and what she's going to, Put out is probably going to be sufficient enough. Do I think so. I don't. I just. I don't get the sense we want to do more detail than that. Mm -hmm. What's the yeah. ultimate? I mean, we're not writing an ordinance, right? It's no, no. We're just making a recommendation. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's and the only. The yeah, and the only other thing when you talk the durable and every that and the commercial grade, I think gets at the weight. In other words, you don't want it blowing away yeah. down the sidewalk. So, and I think that's what the commercial grade is really more about. That's Plus, you know, somebody can sit on it and not break the chair. Yes, <laughs> I was going to say, and the weather resistance, the yeah. weather resistance yeah. coating is all part of the commercial grade. Yeah. So. I, I, I think of it as kind of a way to, you know, give, the, give merchants uh, a way to think about it. Oh, okay, somebody's right. thought this through a little bit in terms of, right. you know, what works best here. Yeah. You know, it just is, it's more of something to assist our, our yeah. merchants in the, in the community more than anything else. Yeah. You know, you, if you could even take a, does the American Legion have their patio out yet? Well, that's included in one of these. Oh, pictures. that's right, yeah. it was, yeah. Because yeah. just a picture of that patio, mm -hmm. I was also too. looking at by the yard. The, there oh, yeah, some, there you go. I mean, it's good. Yeah. Even though it's plastic, it's solid. Yeah. Yeah, we've had, you know, some of the by, by the yard stuff out in our backyard uh, never brought in for 12 years, and it's still holding up pretty well. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So even, yeah, even if it is plastic. Mm -hmm. Not, yeah, not heavy cheap. duty plastic. Heavy duty plastic. Heavy duty. Yeah, the heavy the duty. Yeah. I mean, that's an example. I so think there you clean, get into the color issue more than anything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, ideally, 
it all does kind of blend. It doesn't have to be identical at every location, but hopefully it blends a bit. But we'll, we'll see then. Yeah, I think that's good. I would leave just not to scare people. I'd probably not include the prices on those photos of the, right. you know, pieces and maybe some individual pieces like you've, maybe you could shoot her something that gives examples of you can buy individual pieces as well. You know, it doesn't have to be a set. Would that so work? I'll include some of those visuals from by the yard as well. Okay, excellent. Okay. Um, and then I will note that heavy duty plastic is acceptable and that it, um, under the weather resistant, we should put uh, weather resistant and maintenance free material. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Mission accomplished. Amen. Do you have enough time from now till next council meeting to do that? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. I want to make sure. Uh, we'll just, we'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of overtime these days. I have a coworker that's out, so we were already short staffed. Yeah. Anyways, another, another story, but yeah, we'll get it. Done. Thanks, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, you gave us what we needed. You just didn't realize it. Yes. We're easier to please than you thought. <laughs> if I didn't drop out of typing at 11 words a minute, that would help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, can, I got this one covered. <laughs> Thank you, John. Okay, then uh, we have no old business. Uh, reports from staff was the status of the wayfinding plan, but we've already talked about that. Did you have anything else, Lisa? No, nope, that was the Brandy? Anything? Just that the redevelopment master plan is still underway. We're getting close, I think, um, to having a full draft of the document. And my uh, landscape architecture team and the graphic team, they're putting together the map, that sh you know, the vision map or maps, which I hope to have at our next task force meeting. And then um, after... After that's been vetted, then we're going to start taking it to the Business Association and then to this group for review. I think there might have been another group, or maybe just the businesses downtown, a public session. Um, so that's going to be wrapped up probably June, July-ish. So you're not going to do an open house? The open house was discussed. I think it was going to be like a, maybe you remember, like at a city council workshop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So not like a grand visioning open house like other planning endeavors it's a little bit more yeah. okay so that should be late summer mid -summer. it should be wrapping up yeah i would say planning commission review time i would say august at the latest i would okay. think for like final council approval okay i do have one thing um that i could share the eda is working on there's a vacant lot that the city owns between Sidewinders and the tattoo shop, and they want to make that into a temporary green space. So that's in the works. We're working with WSB on some preliminary plans, and as I mentioned, it'll be temporary, but there's a couple different options for maybe having a space for some food trucks and then the green space um, more on the 7th Avenue side, or 7th, 7th Street. I'm confused. Avenue. Yep, 7th Avenue. Thank you. 7th <laughs> Avenue versus Sepala. Yeah. So that is good. Works. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's a good thing to do there. It makes it just more attractive even for anybody who might be considering yeah. mm -hmm. developing on it. That's what happened when they finally paved that vacant area mm -hmm. at 7th and Margaret. It, and sodded, yeah. <laughs> well, paved part of it, sodded yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. the big portion, and that made... It just made it look so much more attractive. Mm -hmm. Plus, more places to sit and eat. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. OK, uh, reports from council liaison. Yeah, kind of along that note, I would say that um, the Arts and Culture Commission are um, working pretty diligently. Um, so I think Love is looking at a mural on that side of the wall, too. So I think that would really jazz things up over there. Um, in terms of the council, um, I think you alluded to this, Lisa, but 
we are getting a community development director, so I think that will ease a lot of the work um, and have a little bit more direction. Um, and then um, we have a lot of events coming up. The, um, there's the, the dump day, the spring cleanup day on April 30th. So we did change the time. Um, well, the staff changed the time from 8 to 11 because it's um, a little bit more suitable for volunteers, but also, you know, um, there are a few people, I think, going around a few times. <laughs> yeah. So um, are we going to get punch cards? <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, t the weekend following would be um, the garage sale, I believe, so. Okay. I just coordinated with Oakdale City Airport to make a day of it. Okay, any questions on? You I'm look guilty. Sale. You know, you actually managed to look guilty. I did, was guilty. I'm <laughs> to go to garage sales all day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I've done that. Okay, reports from commissioners. Nothing? Nothing, nothing? Nothing. 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 Wow. Well, I'll just mention that <clears throat> on the 24th, uh, John and I were at a meeting with the council and EDA and staff, a uh, little joint meeting just to cover, and the attorney was there, and it was primarily his you know, meeting to kind of cover some things we've heard before, but also just in more detail and some additional items, and the attorney's putting together like a, putting his presentation together that he'll share with staff and then with us, and then That'll be the time to kind of cover it in more detail with all of you. I, I don't think there was anything you're not, you haven't heard before. It was open meeting law, the data practices. <clears throat> um, not, you know, watch out on email. Yep, email. Uh, a big one. Mm -hmm. um, this group's pretty good. Conflict of interest. Uh, and the one thing that, and I'll just share it because I was a little surprised by it, but uh, the last thing, the, I think this was the city manager who said, is just remind everybody to watch what you say when you're in a meeting. And he gave an example, I have no, I don't know where it's from and I don't need to know. Um, but he gave an example of somebody not being aware apparently that their mic was still live after a meeting and making a comment about the old Republic Bank, looks like they were closing or moving or something. And it turned out that was not the case. But it, that can create, you know, real issues. Rumors. Uh, rumors, yes, and just concerns mm -hmm. that are unwarranted and fires that staff or the council or, you know, a commission doesn't need to put out. So I'll just mention that because it was one thing I've not heard before. So just sharing that. So more to come once we get the, you know, the compilation of information from the attorney. Okay, anything you want to add to that, John? Since I thought you took a lot of notes, I had to just I did, scribble a couple. I like today. Ago, that meeting, it feels like forever ago. So, <laughs> so much has happened since I then. Know, it seems to have, but yes, the, the email part of it, but yes, definitely. Yeah. I think you covered most of it. Yeah, and John did, you know, bring up the fact that we had still been questioning whether we're going to have city emails or not, and that was something the... Um, he was the, strongly in favor of it. He was strongly in favor of it, but again, there are costs, and I think the new city manager is going to take a look at it. But in the interim, one of the council members mentioned what he does, and this gets at the whole idea of if there's ever a request for data and you're using your personal email, then your email is up for search, so to speak, you know, to see if you've got any actually, communication. And I actually use my work one because that's what I use. Yeah. But then my workplace could be subjected yeah, exactly. to looking through the emails on their side and things like right. that. So mm -hmm. it could be a, a long chain of different things that yeah. go down the line. Um, and so one of the council members mentions that what he does, he has a separate email 
and he just forwards anything, you know, related to the council business to that email or to that that other email address, and then that's or that's what he gives. No, that is what he forwards to, and that's what he uses then for communication instead of his personal email. But as I say, that's another one of those. Well, that's a bit of a pain to do that as well. So I don't know how you all feel uh, if the city decides it can afford to you know, pay for and maintain commission emails. I don't know how you feel about using that. Um, but I'll, I'll just tell you that that's what was brought up and discussed. So with that being said, if anybody did want to set up their own personal email just for the commission, just let me know what that email address is and we'll change it and then you would not have to forward from one email to the other. Yeah. It would just go directly to your new one that you create as a yeah. commission email. Problem is still it's the same I kind of access. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> Well, the only thing I don't like is having multiple emails to check, you know, email accounts. I, I don't enjoy it. I do it when I need to, but I don't enjoy it. Okay. I don't think there have anything else. The next meeting is the May 5th, uh, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Aye. That was you. Me. John. John. I'll second. Second by. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? None. We're adjourned. 8.30. All right. 828. 828? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>